Now we go to my section, <laughs> original section, and I can't remember what I was going to talk about, and I'm running out of time. Oh, should we do the polls? Okay, so Patty, you know, you're saying I'm running out of time, but well, now we're going crazy. Take questions, so we're going to have to take you down a bit. Um, what is your biggest challenge in benefits administration? Yeah, I, it, this isn't surprising. I mean, it's employee engagement and education is is difficult. Getting people just to sign up for plans, um, and then all of these complex laws and regulations that we've talked about—it's a maze. So that's not surprising. And you know, Hayes actually knows. Like, I'm one of those people where about a year ago I got all excited about identity theft. And I was wanting to sign up for identity theft protection. And I contacted Hayes and I said, this should be something we, the firm should offer. And he's like, we do. <laughs> he's like, here, Bryden, here's where you go. And if you had attended our, our seminar, open enrollment seminar, you would have known. He, he wasn't that mean, but he should have been. So I'm one of those employees that doesn't know what's going on. In which area are your employees seeking more support through your company's benefits offerings, financial wellness, mental health and stress management, retirement benefits, physical fitness and wellness. Yeah, and this doesn't surprise me based on what, in my research for this presentation, that mental health and stress management is a huge issue, an increasingly important issue for employees. So when I was you know, doing some research, trying to come up with you know, what are some of the trends with employee benefits, I found this really helpful um, survey. The Hartford does a, and I think it's even an annual survey regarding employee benefits. And I thought this was really interesting that this year, Gen Z will overtake baby boomers in the workforce. There'll be more Gen Z workers than baby boomers. And then let's look at these, these different um, generations, negative impacts to worker productivity by generation. Gen Z's say financial health are way up there. That's a big issue for them. Mental health um, is above 40%. Um, and physical health. And part of the, I don't know, maybe part of this is they're more willing to acknowledge that they have mental health things that are affecting their work. Um, I just don't know that baby boomers and Gen Xers like me are just so really healthy <laughs> that we don't have any problems. Um, and it's those, you know, those Gen Zers that are having, I, I think maybe they're more willing, which is a good thing. Uh, to report that these these things are affecting them. How often do you experience burnout at work? So Gen Z, 33%, um, and it kind of just goes down as you go. Millennials, um, I think it says 26%, Gen X, um, 22, and baby boomers, 19%. So you know, based on these surveys, it seems like Gen Z and millennials are really stressed out um, and they're experiencing burnout. I mean, 33%, that's a huge, group of people who are feeling burnout um, at work. And so I think as we think about employee benefits and taking care of our employees and make, keeping them happy and healthy, a focus on mental health, um, financial health, physical health is really important. And maybe they're, they're looking for something different from employee benefits and from HR than maybe you've had to deal with for with boomers and Gen Xers. Um, what do employees have to say about their employee benefits? I value the insurance benefits my company offers me 80%. That is a great result, I think. The benefits that I'm offered meet my needs, 75%. I trust my company in making the best decisions about its benefits. Now we're kind of dipping down. <laughs> so 41% say no, they don't trust the company. But 59 is still over half. It's still pretty good. I do not understand the supplemental benefits that are offered, 38%. And, <laughs> but now I do. I'm, I'm signed up for identity theft, and I'm, I'm happy. Um, I want to learn about uh, my benefits year-round, not just during open enrollment, 74%. That may be in, insightful as well. 
that employees want more communication about their benefits and not just, oh, you know, open enrollment window is, is started and you have to choose your benefits. They kind of want more communication about their benefits throughout the year. So some of the likely trends that there's in employee benefits, there's going to be a focus on mental health. Um, so offering online therapy, reimbursement for mindfulness apps, um, stress management workshops. I think financial wellness is a growing area, and I think it's a good idea to help employees. If they're not worried about how they're going to pay their bills and their debts, um, their retirement, um, that helps the mental health uh, side of this chart. So financial wellness programs, financial counseling, retirement planning, uh, budgeting tools. I think for a while we've had a lot of focus on wellness. We think about uh, physical health, weight loss programs, gym memberships. Those things are going to continue. And then the retirement area, there's just a real need to get employees saving for retirement. The days of the defined benefit guaranteed um, plan are over. Um, and we've got to get employees enrolled in these plans. So there's going to be a focus on auto enrollment. Health savings accounts actually are a retirement vehicle, the way you can look at it, because you can, I can incur a health expense today. My HSA can grow tax free, and I could submit the receipt and get a reimbursement 10 years from now in retirement. So health savings accounts are a, are a retirement vehicle. Um, 401k plan auto portability. There's a great podcast about that somewhere on the Williams Mullen website. Um, lifetime income options. So there are going to be enhancements and changes to the retirement area. And I'm starting to run out of time, truly. So I probably need to move along. Um, but this is important. 52% of American households are at risk of not covering their essential expenses in retirement. We, we People are not saving the way they should for retirement. Um, nearly half of American households have no retirement savings, and only 35% ages 50 to 54 have saved more than $100,000. That means 65% um, don't even have $100,000 in their 50s save for retirement. Um, so we have legislative changes, the Secure 2.0 Act, Secure Act, we're designed to get people to enroll in their plans. Um, I guess, let's see what I want to focus on here. They're going to be increased catch-up contributions for employees ages 60 to 63, which is a good thing to help people catch up on what they haven't been saving. Um, for high earners in 2026, their um, catch-up will have to be in the form of a Roth. And in 2027, the federal government will be making direct um, matching contributions to participants' accounts um, subject to certain income uh, limits. We have some proposed legislation, the Automatic IRA Act of 2024. Um, employers with over 10 employees will be required to offer a retirement plan or enroll employees in an automatic IRA or similar plan. The Retirement Savings for Americans Act would create a federal government managed fund for employees who do not have access to an employer's retirement plan. So the SECURE Act, SECURE.2 Act, and these other legislative initiatives are designed to start getting people saving for retirement because it's a real problem. Um, moving on to health plans. So really the theme here is that, you know, for years we've had the disclosure requirements and all of the technical requirements for retirement plans. And over the recent, you know, maybe the last 15 years, increased regulation of group health plans and disclosure requirements. And there's a lot more transparency in the group health plan area. And that leads to things like the Johnson and Johnson or the Johnson and Johnson lawsuit that um, Allison mentioned, where this information is out there and then plaintiff's attorneys can get a hold of this information and start making claims that there are breaches of fiduciary duty. Um, there's just a lot of disclosure, more disclosure and transparency in the group health plan area. And so these are just some of the things, I guess some of them under the um, Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021, um, a lot more disclosures that are participants have more information about how their group health plan works, the pricing of their health plans, um, and the cost of their plans. This item here, I wanna just touch on for a minute, the gag clause prohibition. So this is where uh, if you have a self-insured plan and you have a, a administrative services only agreement with a TPA, that agreement cannot prohibit the plan 
from providing provider specific costs or quality of care information or data to referring providers, plan sponsors, participants, beneficiaries, or individuals who are eligible to become plan participants or beneficiaries, restrict plans or, or insurers from electronically accessing de identified claims and encounter information, or prohibit plans and insurers from sharing the above information. This is instead of making these provisions unenforceable. Congress put the responsibility on employers to not agree to agreements that have gag clauses. And I haven't seen a um, administrative services agreement that has a heading prohibited gag clause. Okay. It's, it's hit. You have to understand the prohibitions on the disclosing information that the, the agreement may call confidential information. And then you have to, the plan, has to certify to the government that they have not entered into a, an agreement that has a gag clause. And you have to do that every December 31, beginning with last December 31. So this is a burden on employers and plan sponsors. Now you can delegate to the TPA to make the certification on your own, but it's your responsibility to not enter into a TPA agreement that has a gag clause. All right. Let me see. Um, welfare plans now have the same fee disclosure from service providers that apply under group health plans. And that's the end. And so Patty should be happy that I got at least before 1130 and we can take some questions. So now I'm going to join um, Nona and Allison and we can take questions from you guys. <laughs> 